So welcome everybody to the Wasm Edge community meeting. Today we've got a, a guest from uh, reply.de. We've also got um, Michael talking about uh, Wasm Edge Bind again. And to uh, kick things off today, we've got Hydei and he's going to cover off again. We had a great um, uh, presentation last week about the Wasm Edge 0.9.0 release and Hydei is going to um, do a, a follow up on that one. And uh, if he's ready, we can uh, switch on over to Hydo and you take it away, mate. Okay, great. So um, today I'm going to review the uh, 0.9.0 release. And because we have, uh, you know, the very long version in our last uh, community meeting. So uh, this time I will go it uh, very quickly. Uh, if you want to build our uh, Watson Edge, uh, I believe you can uh, use this table, which is the Watson Edge with the uh, SRC uh, postfix. Uh, because we added a version file in this table, if you build with this table, then you can get the correct version. And if you just download the, uh, you know, the GitHub version, then uh, you will get a very weird version called 0.0.0-unreleased. Uh, so uh, if you want to build from source, we suggest you use the um, uh, SLC table. And if you are on Linux, uh, whatever you are on the CentOS, Fedora, or Ubuntu, any Linux distribution, and you can try our, you know, this uh, Beninus release. Uh, this is a, a static binary, so you will not need to, you know, install or build LLVM by yourself. Yeah, so most of the dependency are all linked in this release. And if you are on Ubuntu, you may uh, try this, uh, which is a dynamic link file so you may need to install a dependency by yourself and actually in the future we believe we will uh, keep this uh, general version and we will move our you know our distribution release to um, each distribution for example you can download our uh, what's edge on the uh, arc linux from the package manager system. And we are going to uh, submit the uh, Fedora package, uh, also the Debian package. So in the future, um, the other distribution can, uh, can be accessed uh, by the package manager, not from our GitHub release. Also, we also we release the uh, Intel model and M1 model for the Mac OS, and uh, this this actually we we use the uh, GitHub runner, so it should be the Windows 10 version. And one thing is that some of the future, uh, some of all the features in Mac OS and Windows may not work very well. Well, for example, the WASI part, because most of the WASI function in Windows uh, platform, we didn't, you know, we didn't uh, implement them all. So if you encounter any issue, please uh, submit and GitHub an issue to us, then we will, you know, we will uh, just arrange them and to fix them. So here is all of our release platforms. And for features, I only just you know, simplify into four points. Uh, the first one is that we enable the uh, CMD proposal by default. So uh, if you don't want this feature or this proposal, uh, you can use a flag to dis disable it. And also we support the universal Watson format, which is a uh, uh, a standalone Watson format, Watson file uh, with a native binary in custom session. So when you compile your Watson file with our uh, Watson Edge compiler, we will uh, just embed the native code in the custom session and output a, a 
new Watson file. So you can tag this file to other uh, runtime or other platform, then they will fall back to use the Watson part. If you run this output Watson file with our Watson Edge, then it will try to use the native binary. And we do lots of refactoring and upgrade on our CAPI. So you may need to check the uh, release note. There is there are very, very large change. So uh, you may need to check this uh, before you see it. And the last one, which is that we have provided an uh, alpha version of the uh, ROS bindings. So uh, if you want to embed in our Watson Edge runtime in a Rust application, you can try these uh, bindings. Then we fix um, to, I, I believe these two is very important bug fix. The first one is that we uh, fix the WASD socket feature on Mac OS. And the other one is uh, before the 0 0.9.0, uh, if you have some benchmark Watson file or very special Watson file, and it will uh, encounter some, you know, an expected error when try to load it, and we just figure out and fix it. Okay, so that's all of my uh, zero point nine point zero release review. Now I, I will turn back to Tim. Thanks. Thanks, Hade. Really great. Um, so yeah, if, uh, like you say, go and check out those uh, release notes. Uh, so there's a lot of changes there. So um, it's really well written up and uh, these changes are excellent. Things are moving forward. So just go ahead and check that out if you're using any of these. Now we could go to the speaker from reply.de. So just ask you, uh, Sven, are you at all ready to present if needed? Hello. Hi. Hello. So um, I... I would love you to, uh, to to kick off with a bit of a bit of a background on reply.de. It's uh, very impressive, a lot going on there, and I think it would be really valuable for people to get a, a quick overview um, of what you're doing. And uh, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> so, are you okay? Do you want to kick off and, and do your session now? Is that okay? Yeah. So, so uh, I would try to uh, share my screen. Perfect. Let's see if okay. that's uh, possible. Okay. Um, okay, there you go. Your screen's on and looks great. Take it away. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I hope you see, uh, can see a uh, presentation screen. And uh, yeah, uh, who is Liquid Reply? So uh, Reply is a, a consulting company and uh, every, I would say, a subsection is an own company and Liquid Reply is um, consultant company for Kubernetes. So that's, I would say, roughly it. Um, yeah, um, what we are really interested in was, uh, so I need to say uh, I'm uh, here. Uh, for, so I joined in uh, November. So uh, this is my third month here. So I'm, I'm really new. And uh, as I started, we discussed a bit about uh, the uh, upcoming WebAssembly uh, uh, yeah, things. So uh, that, that's a, it's an evolving ecosystem and we're really amazed and thought, uh, hey, how can this be uh, run together uh, with uh, Kubernetes since this is our uh, main focus. And uh, yeah, I would like to say a bit about uh, why we uh, thought about that. Uh, uh, yeah, how, how we started, what our current approach is, which you uh, may know since you are the main part of the, our current approach, and uh, yeah, what we're thinking about uh, that can be an outlook. Um, yeah, when I started, uh, there was lots of uh, onboarding tasks for me to do, and uh, uh, Christoph, a colleague of uh, mine, uh, said as an, uh, I would say, side project uh, during this onboarding phase, why not uh, starting with uh, integrating, for example, a web, appli uh, web assembly application in Kubernetes, which should be an easy thing. And we learn a bit more about the uh, ecosystem. Uh, in general, uh, the Kubernetes community, especially if, uh, when it uh, comes to edge computing, 
needs uh, fast and uh, tiny containers, which uh, WebAssembly is, as you know, a promising technology. So uh, we started with uh, Crosslabs, since this was the, I would say, first thing that uh, comes out of Google when you say, uh, type in WebAssembly and Kubernetes. And uh, yeah, uh, our, I would say, uh, uh, favorite uh, desktop uh, distribution of Kubernetes is Kite, since uh, it is really easy to start up. You only need a Docker daemon. And uh, it's really tiny, and I would say the de facto standard for integration testing and CI pipelines. So that, that was our first idea. So uh, we started with uh, a, a kind installation. This uh, kind picture is a bit outdated since uh, system D is not running a Docker, but a container D. But um, in general, it's, it's like that. You have an, an host system uh, that runs a container. Inside the container is everything that's needed for a uh, Kubernetes node. And the most important part uh, here is the crustlet that then uh, yeah, starts the uh, containers. And our idea was, why not introduce a new node type with not a crustlet, but uh, uh, with not a kubelet, but a crustlet. So that was the idea. We just took the uh, uh, guide from the documentation, introduced a new type, created a new image that only contains uh, a crustlet and define a new join procedure, how that node can join the cluster since uh, it's not a default cube ADM uh, way. So we just have a node beside this node and uh, that was the main idea. Uh, worked pretty well. So we have this joining uh, crustlet nodes step, which doesn't look like a big change, but it is. And um, yeah, then we have a cluster with different node types and could schedule the demo with some downsides. So uh, the kind always tries to uh, schedule the container network interface on the uh, crusted node, which is not possible uh, to run. Uh, we can't, can't have the de uh, daemon sets uh, on the crusted node since it's only uh, can run the uh, uh, WebAssembly content the provider understands. Uh, we need a lot of uh, custom tolerations uh, that keep away the containers from the uh, uh, WebAssembly nodes. And uh, the routing uh, traffic to the, uh, uh, to the cluster is difficult uh, to not really possible since uh, we don't have it in our network. So there were some downsides. We had an uh, we had uh, yeah, uh, a look at how do we, uh, can we do this. Uh, and at this point, we said, OK, um, maybe that's not the way. And uh, we continue with something else. Um, and uh, yeah, we had a lot of code changes uh, to, the, uh, to, to uh, made in our kind installation. And we know kind is not that uh, interested in big changes. And they want to keep their code uh, base clean and small. So uh, yeah, then we put it aside. And short after that, I yeah, found, uh, I would say that the Wasm Edge uh, website and um, by scrolling it, I found the uh, tiny notice from the GitHub uh, project, uh, OCI compliant, with, where I thought, okay, what does it mean OCI compliant? Uh, if it would be possible to run it in Kubernetes, I should have heard about it and uh, I haven't. So let's dig deeper. And uh, yeah, that, that was uh, the moment where I would say I fall into the rabbit hole and uh, were very interested in the project and uh, how, how it's working. And uh, then I found the, uh, I would say, amazing uh, was an edge containers example repository. Uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, that, that I think is a game changer and is uh, totally underrated at the moment. So uh, I, I'm wondering why not uh, every uh, uh, news website uh, in the cloud native space is talking about it, but uh, we will see maybe that's coming in the future. 
So uh, the idea is uh, exactly the same like with Crosslet. So based on the uh, example repository, um, we take our Crosslet, uh, we take our um, a kind node, replace just uh, run C by C run. Uh, we need to adapt the config a bit and we don't have any code changes to uh, kind. So we can use a standard kind. We can uh, have, uh, yeah, wasm workloads on the same node as I'm, I'm missing a term of it. I would say uh, default OCI containers, but uh, since there is nothing else uh, besides uh, OCI containers at the moment, I don't have the name. Maybe uh, plain old OCI containers. I don't know. Um, again, uh, yes. Uh, so, so I was totally amazed and put it uh, that uh, together. And uh, yeah, then I found the problem that uh, when I have a WASM workload with the um, uh, host socket example, so uh, which, which by the way, I, I really like that, that uh, I have a way to uh, make calls and uh, get calls. So the socket implementation is something I, I really like. And, uh, yeah, uh, then I found out that the uh, annotation uh, that is used at the moment is set at the pod level. And when I put another container into uh, my pod, then the other container needs to be the same, uh, have the same handler than the original one. So um, in uh, Kubernetes, I would say many integration patterns are relying on sidecars. So uh, when you have a uh, distro-less container and put an, an ephemeral container to it to debug it or something like that, which I would say is uh, most likely comparable to the WASM uh, edge uh, scenario, or you want to have a service mesh, or uh, what uh, uh, I especially like is uh, something like a um, uh, uh, function runtime like Knative. Um, then you need uh, different uh, types for your containers inside the pod. And uh, therefore, I just uh, patched, hacked. So, so very dirty, changed the uh, run C with uh, a yeah, branch where I uh, used the check um, that's on the, the check on the annotation and just changed it to the env variables. So it's, it's, I would say, a pretty dirty solution, but it works. And now you can uh, set the uh, run OCI handler wasm value to an env var, and it can be set to, uh, per container. Uh, if there is, is a cleaner solution uh, for setting things on containers, I um, uh, would be glad to hear. But uh, in the discussion on GitHub, hub, uh, we, uh, uh, so, so I saw that it's uh, not intended that the user has to set some things, but it's uh, set on the image. But I would say that's future work. Um, I would just short, uh, sh uh, just quickly show you how the, uh, it's from, from our side uh, intended to work with the uh, Knative example. So uh, I chose the Knative example because uh, we uh, get a cool feature here uh, that's um, scale to zero. And uh, yeah, with that, we have our uh, WASM application. Let's short, uh, show if I have a, a cluster running. Uh, Okay, I already have a cluster running. Um, so uh, this step I've uh, already done. So I created a cluster with the default kind uh, command line tool. I just changed uh, the image to my experimental branch. I think I already have installed uh, the Knative, but uh, it doesn't hurt to do it again. And uh, yeah, uh, this is just the uh, default installation guide from the Knative website. So there's nothing special with that. I just put it into uh, uh, yeah, one uh, uh, place where I can execute it just uh, after another. And uh, then 
uh, I can use the K, uh, KN command line tool where I say I want to have a new K, uh, KNATO service uh, called uh, Wasm Echo. I just use the default image, so, so the demo image. And uh, yeah, here I set my uh, end variable. Uh, and that's basically it. Oh, okay. Do I, I just have one in use. So I would quickly uh, uh, force to overwrite it. Oh, can't do this. Okay, you need to believe me that the last installation of the Knative service is the same like we have right now. Um, then I would just uh, start. Uh, my K9S, it's just, an, uh, yeah, I would say a command line extension and command line UI, I think, uh, that shows me uh, all the parts of the default namespace. And since uh, we now have the scale to zero, uh, our service still exists. But uh, when I forward my ingress, ah, already in use. Uh, that's the problem when uh, you try your example before uh, the presentation and the example is uh, still running. And when I call my application, then hopefully it spins up a new... Uh... Yeah, so here I got my data payload back. And when we show inside the container, we see uh, there is the queue proxy which is an, uh, I would say, uh, plain old uh, OCI container. And we have our user container. And the user container is our demo application that uh, is, uh, just contains a uh, WebAssembly module and is uh, run by the uh, WASM Edge runtime. So that's the basic idea. And, uh, yeah, with this setup, uh, there is no difference anymore. Uh, if you, what kind of uh, container handler uh, your container is uh, using, so you just spin up uh, WebAssembly containers, and they can be integrated in any Kubernetes uh, scenario that's uh, currently out there. So, so you can just put it into a service mesh, and it's meshed automatically and. Uh, I think this really feels like a game changer, even uh, if, yeah, it's, it's not that so different from running uh, other payloads, but uh, I really like it. Yeah, so that's basically it. I'd like to thank you. If you have some questions, I would answer them. Uh, otherwise, uh, I will give it back to Tim. Thank you so much, Sven. That's really, really good. Uh, very impressive. And uh, yeah, we always have to thank the, the demo gods for when we do live demonstrations. <laughs> um, no, that's really good. Very impressive. Very excellent. And uh, yeah, you're right. It's that um, architecture um, is incredible. And I just think maybe just needs a little bit more time to, uh, you know, get absorbed by the community because uh, I mean, I guess it's only been sort of several weeks or something since we've put all those demos together and, and put it out there and made a couple of videos and things like that. I'm really glad that you found it. Uh, that's that's really great. And um, yeah, I'd love to hear um, more about what you're doing in the future. Okay, so we've also got Michael who's gonna talk about the um, Wasm Edge uh, bind gen. And so that'd be really great if Michael wants to uh, go ahead and uh, Start his presentation. Hey, Michael. Um, hi. Yeah. Hi. Sorry. I, um, as you can see, I'm I'm in a car. I'm driving somewhere. And uh, so anyway, um, I don't have a slide presentation, but uh, mm -hmm. I just want to discuss, um, you know, a little bit about um, some of the work we have uh, we have done recently with uh, with with Spygen. You know, um, as many of you already knew, you know, one of the big shortcomings of uh, web assembly is that it's only support limit very limited data types right you know so meaning that uh, if you write a function in web assembly and you embed it somewhere by default you can only pass things like integer so you know that's why you never see a hello world 
in WebAssembly because you know it can't handle a string, right? You know, so it can't really say hello world. So all all the things that you see are you know like a computer array, you know, something like that of one plus one, you know, something some, something of that nature, you know, an integer type of things. So you know that's one of the um um. um I would say issues with WebAssembly that surprised a lot of uh, uh, you know new developers, and uh, um, uh, from early on that we adopted a solution called Wasm Bygen. Wasm Bygen was initially developed for browsers because you know they have the exact same problems when they try to embed WebAssembly into the browser, and uh, um, so they have uh, uh, um, you know a WebAssembly plus JavaScript solution. Basically, you have a set of tools that essentially take a WebAssembly program and then um, um, convert the, um, you know, if C is complex input and output parameters, it complex them into memory pointers, and then uh, have a, and they automatically generate the stuff on the JavaScript side so that they can communicate. So essentially, you take a WebAssembly, uh, you take a WebAssembly program, and the tool would out, output a set of JavaScript, which your other JavaScript can call. And, uh, you know, so that's um, essentially what's, what's in Beijing is, you know, um, that's, um, you know, primary targeted, you know, browser settings, but can also be used, you know, JS and, you know, things like that. We have been using that for uh, for the past two years. And I think it was, um, um, you know, it, quite successful in our, um, you know, Node.js plugins. Um, however, there's a number of issues. The first is that um, we have now gone so far beyond, you know, embedding things in JavaScript. You know, we have, um, you know, our Go SDK, Rust SDK, and, you know, a bunch of others. And uh, so to rely on the JavaScript only tool that generate very JavaScript specific, um, you know, um, 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 you, you know, stuffs is not an uh, ideal solution. And then the second problem is um, since Rust um, 1.50, um, they have made changes so that um, Wasm Bygen is now only compatible with Wasm, um, Wasm um, the Wasm 32 unknown unknown target. It's no longer compatible with the Wasm WASI target. You know, I think the rationale behind it is that if you are using WASI, you are probably not in, using inside the browser. So we don't want to support, you know, Wasm Bygen. That also speaks to the roots of Wasm Bygen in the browser. You know, it's really intended just for the browser. You know, it's not uh, intended for the, uh, even for Node.js environment, although it can be used in Node.js environment. So, you know, uh, because of that, you know, um, we look at uh, other, um, you know, other people's solutions, you know, uh, like the Wasm and the Wasm Time, and of course they they also need to handle strings and you know things like that, and they have a lot of tutorials, and most of them deals, uh, you know, use the approach where you know you manually, um, you know, convert the um, complex data objects into memory pointers back and forth, you know, compare, you know, from the host compare um, um, convert them to integers and uh, you know that points to the to the memory space. And then in the in the WebAssembly program to access that memory space and then you know we return value to do the same thing again. It is okay, but it's very tedious. So we thought uh, perhaps we can use the same approach that Watson Beijing has, but get rid of all the JavaScript. You know, that's uh, what we call Wasm Edge Bygen. You know, that's uh, essentially it takes a very similar approach to Wasm Bygen. You know, so um, currently the, the Wasm language it supports is Rust because Rust has this very nice macro system. So uh, in Rust, you can write your functions um, any way you want. You know, that's with any type of complex parameter, and you just uh, annotate that method with a macro called Was Wasm Edge Bygen, and the uh, um, the Rust compiler would know um, at the compile time it would generate the bytecode. That um, that um, it would convert your original um, core parameters into uh, integers, into memory pointers, right? You know, and then um, in each of the host language, you know, we have done for Go, and we are we are also looking for help to do it in other languages as well. Is to um, is to have all this logic that's embedded into our SDK. So when so when the uh, so when you make a host uh, so uh, in the host when you make SDK calls to say I I I'm gonna Call this wasm function. Um, it uh, takes the string, the byte array, and you know things like that as you know regular parameters. But under the hood, it would uh, follow the convention that's set up by wasm H bygen, converting them into integers, and then pass them to the uh, wasm function. And after the wasm function returns, it converts back. So it essentially does the same thing wasm bygen does, and but without the JavaScript dependency. And it also does the same thing where 
you know, um, um, that's a memory memory pointer based tutorial does, but without um, without you know you having the developer having to see any of the memory pointers, you know, they were just dealing with the high level language construct. So you know, um, so like I said, you know, that's uh, um, um, we have done it for. Um, for us, as a WebAssembly language, we are also looking to see, um, um, you know, um, how how what's the best way to do it in things like Tiny Go, Swift, and you know, in those languages, because each language is gonna have a different way to, um, you know, to make this automatic conversion happen, right? You know, because in Rust, you just happen to have this, uh, you know, very nice, uh, you know, ma macro system, but in other languages, there may be a post processor, you know, something like that. And uh, um, then on the host on the host SDK side, we are doing it. We have done it for Go, and we're gonna do it for um, um, for our Rust SDK, for our Python, um, and C C plus plus, and uh, um, um, uh, Node.js as well. So uh, even in the Node.js environment, we're gonna take a step away from the um, from the Wasm Bygen approach and do the Wasm Edge Bygen approach. Um, one of the great benefits it gives us it's uh, it allows to upgrade the um, the Wasm compiler because you know um, until now you know if you do uh, if you're using Wasm Edge with uh, with Node.js you are pretty limited pretty much limited to um, you know the Rust compiler 1.50 and uh, that is quickly getting too old because um, the Rust version 2021 default compiler is the version that higher than 1.50 so you know um, so for any package that label itself to be compatible with you know, 2021, you're gonna have compiler errors. So, you know, that has caused you know endless problems in the in in the community and our, among our users. So, you know, that's um, I think with those uh, with this new change, it's gonna be um, you know a much better experience. You know, that's um, that allows you know um, Wasm Edge to be embedded in in um, um, different application scenarios. So, um, if you are interested in how this works, you know, um, you go to the um, the official documentation, you know, the Wasmage book. There's a section called uh, Embedding Wasmage, and under that uh, under that section, there's a section called Go SDK, and under that, there is a, a, a core Wasm function. You know, it's the first is embed Wasm application, the second is embed Wasm function, and you can see um, several examples. The functions that take a byte array as input, the function that take a string as input, returns a string as output, you know, things, um, then you would be able to see, you know, basically a, a, a complete example of how the Wasmage bygen is um, is being used. And uh, um, uh, as usual, all this uh, code is open source. You can you can go find the uh, you can go find the um, the Rust macros how it's implemented, and you can find the Go SDK to see how it's implemented on the host side. That's the feature I want to highlight. You know, that's um, um, you know, so hopefully we can get um, you know, um, get people to try it out and uh, um, you know, see how you like it. And if you like it, or if you don't like it, you know, that's uh, make sure to let us know. You know, send us uh, issues as usual. And uh, um, if you uh, if you want to help out, you know, there's uh, um, you know, we want to uh, implement it across all language SDKs that we have. You know, so that you know we have a consistent way of calling complex. On parameters in in um, you know your your Wasm functions, so yeah, that's it. You know that's uh, um, thank you, Tim. Yeah, that's uh, you know, so um, I yeah. I'm gonna stay on the call and I'm gonna put myself because I need to because I have a four-hour drive. I need to get there, you know, <laughs> you know, um, fairly soon. So so I uh, so I'm gonna uh, turn off the video, but I'm gonna stay on the call. So so if you guys have okay. uh, any questions, I'm gonna be here and I'm gonna be able to answer them. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, that's that's a really, really good point. Um, we we really need to have those uh, higher level data types and, you know, yeah, simply strings um, being part of uh, the WebAssembly uh, execution. And uh, I think about, I guess it was a couple of years ago, we did, um, you know, some articles about strings in WebAssembly and because it was the case that when you would do the hello world, um, examples, which is you know such a simple thing uh, to do, but WebAssembly in its in its um, you know in its core existence couldn't actually do that. It could just do one plus one or something like that. So the return types for this is really taking not only the, the in the browser um, usage to a whole new level, but where all the different applications um, for WebAssembly in all the different um, language um, in the SDKs um, can now. Um, communicate with high-level data types and useful things. Um, and I guess I guess the core of the 
the conversation way back then was that for a program to be useful, it does actually have to, at the very least, be able to handle those um, high level data types that humans that interact with it will, um, will need. So um, we've, um, over the years, we've done a few different things as well. We've implemented uh, different um, varieties of storage, um, you know, ephemeral storage, uh, permanent storage and things like that. Tried to build on top of that, just that core WebAssembly functionality to try and make it useful for applications. And um, just going back to um, the, the work they've done by um, reply uh, the that's that sort of work there where we're now heading into that um, open container initiative um, world where we're really starting to have this modular approach across all different languages across all different operating systems and um, it really is is primed to just um, take off so this is all of these things are going to go hand in hand it's really great um, we've got some time for questions we've got a few people online and any questions a good question. And like Michael was saying, uh, if you want to help out, um, please, if you if you need to know uh, where things are now, we can we can uh, find that out for you. If you'd like to help out, if you'd like to develop and um, collaborate on these projects, it's all open source, all in GitHub, um, very transparent. There's, you, know, you can feel free to put issues in. If you don't like a feature or if you have problems, um, just reach out to us and um, Obviously, the whole all of the developers um, on this team are superb, and um, we can get through anything together. So let's let's get into it. And um, I think that's about all. Um, I've checked the chats. We've had all the speakers. I don't have any questions. So everyone's happy with that. We can call that a wrap. Thank you so much for uh, coming along and watching. Um, this is growing every time we do it. Um, first Tuesday of every month. Thank you all for all of your time. Um, thanks to Sven, thanks for speaking with us. Um, I'd love to connect again and uh, A, have you back, but B, find out a lot more about what you're doing and how you're doing it. Very interesting and very cool. And uh, uh, check out all your infrastructure and your sites and it's very impressive. So thank you so much for coming along and giving uh, us your valuable time. I'm very glad uh, for uh, being here. And uh, yeah, it just feels like uh, standing on the shoulders of giants uh, since I just, tried out what you have and uh, I'm really my mace of your work so thank you thank you yeah the, the team's pulled this together in uh, you know under two years it, it's amazing um, what what's been done so it's so brilliant to see it in use um, in a production environment with, with a great product it's excellent so let's keep the relationship going and um, keep developing all right guys so thank you so much for coming we'll, we'll see you next time <laughs>